Nick, since it's been a while, can you describe what you feel like you lost during COVID workouts? The, oh, like, I know I know you guys did everything you could to manage it and maximize it. Well, how significant was that and what these guys lost during a year or 18 months? Yeah, that was um, that was awful, by the way, to train those minimum numbers of eight, maximum numbers of eight at a time. There could be no contact. Communication was at the worst. Um, spotting you couldn't do. Uh, you couldn't have any team workouts together. Basically, they couldn't even get a breakdown after a training session or a workout. So you lost a lot of that, you know, togetherness, relationship stuff. Um, it was just hard. It was hard to have everybody separate. You had you had a weight room set up in, our, in the weight room that was spread out with only eight eight players. And you had another weight room set up in the indoor with eight players. So there was no. I mean, sometimes I didn't see I didn't see a guy all day because I was outside or inside or vice versa. So it was hard. It was really hard. We tried to make the best of it, like everybody else. But I think we lost a lot. Like we have these conversations about. Um, this team needs to get more toughness and more leadership this year. Like, I know you're not making excuses for it, but I would have to think that a lot of that comes from the things that were taken away. Absolutely, 100%. 100%. It's just hard. It's just because everything was different. You also had to be, from a physiological standpoint and a safety standpoint, you have to assume for those three months when they were home, they did nothing. So the progressions were a lot slower, just you know, oozing them in. By the time you get them to the point where they would have been, camp started. Yeah. Oh no, not here, camp didn't start. Oh it did, and it didn't. So I think that affected us in every way. Would you sense the leadership issue because of that? In the last year, would you kind of sense it's not the same because these guys have not been together on that cohesion? Yeah, I, I think if, if you're not in a position to lead, really can't lead. Leadership is those daily experiences and you know, setting a standard and making sure everybody's holding up to that standard. If you don't have a standard to set, how can you lead? It's, it's just, it's, it's extremely hard. Are you all caught up now? Like I think, yeah, I think we're caught up um, and we made really good progress over the winter. And, it's exciting now. Can't wait to get back and get started. Well, and Ryan talked about how leadership was a real emphasis in the offseason. How did that manifest itself? And where do you feel the leadership level is right now? Yeah, so again, you know, even sometimes I think you have to go through struggle uh, to come out of it stronger. And some of our players last year played for the first time. And there were struggles. And when you come out of it on the other side, now they kind of know what to expect. And now they, you know, some guys just, because they don't play, they feel like they can't be out in front of a group because they haven't stepped on the field and, you know, play. So you had a little bit of that. And then, you know, I think because of that, guys stepped up and really different mindset, completely different mindset. What you, in terms of, Buying in, being all in, being. Uh, what do you like about this group? Are they not as committed as three years ago? What do you, what's the makeup? What do you think of this? The age of the kids, etc. Yeah, I, I think again, a lot of these guys have the experience on the field. Um, have been in the program. Now it's their turn, um, and the um, the leadership is is on the right. Trajectory, and it's very exciting because um, I think they understand now what it is, what it truly is, what um, it means to be a leader. Because again, just because you're a, just because you have a title sometimes as like being a leader, that doesn't necessarily correlate or translate to actually being a leader and having influence on each other and holding that standard. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Is that also a part of your job, cultivating leadership? I believe it is. I believe um, cultivating leadership because of the daily experiences on putting them in that situation so they can lead, uh, whatever it may be. And coaches aren't involved a lot. Now it's, the rules have changed a lot here in the last five to ten years, but they're with us more than anybody. So 
you get to see that. You get to, you know, I think part of my job is to help drive the, the culture, whatever our culture, you know, which is the fight. You know, that's, that's part of it. So, and help those guys through it. Nick, how much easier is it to cultivate a culture when you have, and leadership when you have a second year starting quarterback? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's such an important good. position. Like, it seems like it'd be easier to have leadership on your roster when you've got a guy at that position who, who's done it. Well, if you look back at history, history tends to repeat itself. So if you look at Justin Fields, his first offseason, never stepped on the field in his second year, which is COVID, so you really can't use, you know, it's hard to say that one. But he was a different leader. He was a different player his second year. CJ has now gone through those struggles and the, the ups and downs. Now he kind of gets it, and I think it's going to be – it's still going to be hard, but I think it'll be a little bit easier for him. Ryan, I'm assuming you saw him take those steps uh, in practice and things like that when you're out there watching, but have you seen those steps in the weight room from CJ? Being a leader, not just, you know, in a huddle or, or calling plays and stuff like that, but, but also when you guys are in the middle of December. And yeah, he, he, yeah he, uh, he's, he does a really good job when you're in that struggle with his – with his guys, with his with his boy. I mean, it's it's good. It's good. And Ryan said that it wasn't always like that. <laughs> Early on, he didn't know like oh, no. where, where was he and where is he now? Um, he's much improved. Put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been easier for him to do that leadership part? Because like Justin's kind of got ruined by COVID. Yeah, year. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne's only here for a year as a starter. It's, it's been a while since you guys have had a multi-year starter quarterback for the normal world. Has it been maybe easier for CJ to kind of grow into that role this offseason? I think it's easier than, than the, the examples you just gave, um, but every day we're just trying to, I just want to make sure he sees it from all views, not just, you know, three-step drop, you got, you know, not just football, but from all views, because part of being a leader is everybody's watching you, everybody's listening to you, everybody's feeling you, and if you don't have those three characteristics of being seen, being heard, and being felt, then you're really not a leader. And, you know, I sometimes have, a, I don't want to say an argument, but I have a view on being a leader that, you know, people say leader by example. I don't understand what that means. You mean you're doing what's expected, right? Leader by example, what? He just, but if, if, you're not, if you're not heard, if you're not felt by the guys next to you, and obviously if you're not seen, then you're not a leader. So if you don't have those three characteristics, you're not a leader. You have no chance to be an elite. So every day we just want to make sure that he's felt, he's heard, and he's seen in all those aspects. Which of those three aspects with quarterbacks have you seen that you have taken the longest to play? Oh, boy. I, they're all different. They're all different. What about with him? <laughs> um, he likes to talk. So like, he likes to talk, and he does a great job around a player, so you can hear him. Um, I think a lot of times it's just – I think his thing was learning how to work at that level, so being seen at the level that he needs to work at. And he always tells, oh, I'm just a quarterback. I, yeah, I know, I know, I know. You are the player. So you got to get better at all those areas. They were talking about how you guys have the squad during yeah, the yeah. Um, Was he a leader, and are we allowed to know who the, all the other leaders in the squad are? Um, he was a leader, and um, are you allowed? Coach didn't want everybody to know. I'd say you're not allowed, but he was one. Um, he'll probably be one here in the summer. I, he better be one or more. Uh, and it, it was awesome. It was awesome to put those guys in that position and really be uncomfortable sometimes as a leader. And if you're not uncomfortable, you go through that struggle. You don't. You don't learn. You guys like keeping score with the competition. Oh yeah, we keep score everything. Who squad one? Who won it last year? Oh God, I can't remember. We had eight squad. We had twelve squads. I'm trying to think who won. Oh, squad squad ten won. I'm going to assume that's not CJ squad. It was not CJ squad. And I can't, I'm trying to. I got a blank right now. What kind of kid is CJ? Awesome, big hearted, big hearted. Um, you know, really um, wears his emotions on his sleeves at times, but. Really, really, really cares. He's a great kid. <laughs> no medical updates on anything. I can't. Yeah.
<laughs> That's not my job. What, what about what about defensively? We're talking about CJ Alive being the not only the quarterback, but kind of the quarterback of the offense, the weight room. What do you see from these guys defensively, the defensive leaders, that tells you that, that the leadership is going to be at another level from where it was last year? Uh, again, I think you got to look at. I just had told, just told, talked to somebody, a recruit about, you know, last year you had back seven, zero starts. Quarterback, zero starts, never threw a pass. We won't even let him throw a pass as a freshman. Now it's completely different. So if you look at those guys that have played, been through it, the Tommy Eichenbergs, the, um, you know, obviously Zach Harrison, who was a captain last year, um, Ronnie Hickman, um, you know, you'll have Josh Proctor back. You've got some guys that have been through that struggle, the inside guys that have been here forever, those fifth-year guys. Um, and I think they uh, they knew the importance of getting the defense right and doing better. Um, when you caught off guard that JT was able to come in here as late as he did, you're still... Yeah, that, 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 that's an outlier. That doesn't happen very often. It doesn't. So, I guess, like... From your perspective, since you finally got your hands on him normally, what does he look like? I mean, what, what's that mean now? He's, he's, he's much improved, and um, he should be able to, uh, obviously, bigger, faster, and stronger, and more mature, and, you know, been through the program now at least a year. I hadn't even been through a year. Um, you know, he should take that next step. What made him an outlier? Why was he able to do that where other guys? He had a great support system. His dad, Ponce, was like, had a, had a great plan for him and, um, you know, all the whole step of the way. And it was good. I mean, I assume, like, physically, not every kid that comes in, regardless of ratings, oh, and no. that couldn't, couldn't handle that. What was he physically that was able to, to step I mean, obviously, he's huge talent and got a, you know, a bunch of genetic potential. I just think he was more prepared because he had the opportunity through the support system to give him that, you know, kind of all the tools that he needed to get ready. And that doesn't happen much. Last year, so you're a big fan of Tommy Eichenberg. Uh, I love Tommy Eichenberg. Didn't yeah. say much, but tell me what people should know about Tommy um, Tommy really cares. Um, he's a tough guy. I think he, he plays football the way at least I like it. I mean I like the way he plays football and I know a lot of others and he just he, he's a leader now he, he's he doesn't say much maybe in front of the cameras but he talk yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> I don't know because we have some linebackers that like, that, that like to talk to you guys really everybody yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we've had like Ryan like to talk, and uh, there's been there's been some guys. I guess flipping back over. to Darren Lee like to talk too. <laughs> yeah, to still no, it's okay. uh, flipping back over to, to the quarterbacks. Uh, CJ was pretty small when he got here. He, he's obviously developed. Kyle not so much. Obviously still developing. When you get a guy like as small as Devin Brown is. What's the first step for him to try to get there physically where he needs to be? Well, you got to see. You got to look where he's at. Um, with all the uh, assessment tools that we have, and then look at his speed, look at his movement, agility, all those type things, and then you develop a plan, get with our nutritionist, Kay Olson, check body fat, muscle mass, all, all the things that we look at, and then set a plan up for him, and then set goals, periodic goals, short-term goals, and then hopefully he comes back, and then by the end of the summer, he's where we, we need him to be at least you know, doing it safely and then productively. And Are you seeing that from Devin right now? Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's getting better. Nick, when you look back at the Michigan game from last year, does that force you to reevaluate when you see you know, your team getting beat in the last minute like that? Yeah, I mean, I think if you don't, I think everybody had to look in the mirror. Um, everybody, everybody in this building from players, coaches, athletic trainers, nutritionists, equipment managers, everything and just kind of go back and look and, and what happened why and then turn over every stone and you know try to come up with a plan so um, what do you think it was that this team lacked i mean a lot of things we've just talked about 
be honest with you. For what are you maybe, you know, you miss off season, what are maybe the, you know, biggest points of emphasis for you that to make sure that this team is more prepared for this year? Yeah, I think that we've been talking about the whole time's leadership. Um, all the great, you know, great, great, great teams that you've been around, they've had great leaders. Obviously, you got to have talent and really good players, but the leadership, um, leadership, because coaches aren't around all the time. The personnel isn't around all the time. And that locker room is, you know, that's, that's what matters. Because, because, you, because you've had a level of success, always beating Michigan, winning the Big Ten every year, to not do those things, how much has that changed? Attitudes around here change the way you've done things around here. Um, I think um, I think it's I don't want to say perked everybody up, but I, it's I think the if the volume was already turned up, you're looking for a power button that gets twelve. Yeah, twelve or break it or start you know smash it and get another one with more power. And, you know, just obviously we know how important that game is. And, you know, all those goals and. If you don't reach those goals, you gotta you gotta figure out why. And, and uh, so, at least in, in our area, we try to do you know you try to progress, you try to be innovative, you try to you know I don't know how much Jerry's talked to you guys about the uh, sports science initiative that we've really been you know diving into in the last you know four to five years. So we're just again just trying to you know develop, be innovative, and trying to be the best that we can be. We have a we have a committee. It's called the Pit the Pit Group Performance Innovation Team, which involves Department of Athletics and then the Human Performance Collaborative across campus with, with uh, Josh Hagan and some of his group and Dr. Kramer and our group and it's uh, our sports scientists uh, Nick Domicone and Adam Stewart and Kayla Olson and myself and all of our areas and just really looking at how we can do things better, more efficiently, more effectively. And just trying to progress as we move forward. No, it, it was before that, but again, I think just kind of speed it up a little bit. Let's, let's just make sure we're on top of the line. Yeah, yeah a weird question. In hindsight, could you almost see that coming? Next well, time. you're talking about the. Well, I think you don't. Know, uh, no, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I mean this I, is a win a win. As horrible as it is, I mean, I know that's why it's part of the tour. Could that be a good thing for the future from a, to, you know, to fend off complacency to make sure you realize it just happen on that? I think it's got everybody's attention, which is always a good thing. So. Is there somebody who surprised you from winter workouts what they were able to accomplish? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I like a lot of those younger guys that came in in January. I don't want to give names because somebody gets mad all the time. So, um, but they they uh, they picked it up quick and, and progressed and played pretty well in spring ball. Now they gotta, you know, we'll see how they are when they come back. When you, uh, sorry, <laughs> when uh, when a guy comes in like Jim Knowles to kind of kind of revamp a defense or defensive coaching side, I'm curious, does that change when you look at his film? Do you have to build guys up differently? Does your approach change based on the expectation of what kind of defense or play call is coming in? I don't think from the expectation, maybe of the scheme, expectation is to stop the offense, regardless of the kind of defense. But sometimes in the scheme, you might you might look for different body types. Yeah. So you know, we'll work around. Did, did you, was there a position or somewhere like with a certain position where you're like, yeah, th these guys need to get a little bit leaner, a little bit bigger? Or... We look at everybody. We look at everybody like individually yeah. and, and kind of what, obviously you can't play, it'd be hard to play defensive end at 220 pounds. So, you know, we look at that, it's, it, it, it'd be hard to play, it'd be hard to cover guys if you're a bigger, a giant, like a giant safety. So just try to, uh, what your, what's your job description, where you're at individually, and then try to improve that, um, and try to be the best but, player you could be. But it was nothing out of the ordinary. No, 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 no. With quarterback, the way you guys view the here. Uh, not really, not really. You just 
you're going to run the ball, you better. I mean, you better be able to take the take the take the hits. And at some point, CJ's going to. You know, you got to be able to take the hits. So that's kind of my. That's been my motivation for him. Is, I know you love having played at the senior high school. Physically, I mean, yeah, that's another good, one. Right? Yeah. How different though was he this year compared to last year? Because he's been through the system. Yeah. Uh, he's a lot different. He's another year, you know, another year older, physically stronger. Um, yeah, he's put on some weight. Yeah. Yeah. He said he got worn down. And another one. And I, I think a lot of that was just because he hasn't played football. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, I mean, you, how confident are you that this year he'll get stronger with me to go out? Yeah. yeah. You would hope. I mean, you would think that was. You love, you love working with DeJuan. I, I know oh, you love working with Big fella. Yeah. That's my guy, man. Yeah. Both of your tackles, uh, Justin was just talking about them developing on the field. Yeah. What have you seen from Paris and from DeJuan? in the weight room this offseason is it's probably a little different working with each of those guys. Yeah, you got two ends of the spectrum. Um, two same position. You, did you think you were done with that when Nick left and now you got to do it with Paris? No, you, you, all, you, you got, it's always um, Paris, his body type, um, his athletic attributes are here. The big fella here, two different needs and strengths and weaknesses. Um, but they both play the same same job description. Um, you just gotta look at it individually. You gotta know their 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 job description, of what they gotta do, and then you got two separate. So you got one guy that's leaner. Um, you know, he's got to maintain weight. He's very explosive. Um, you know, kind of refines some things. And you got the other guy that we're just trying to you know get leaner and you know work on conditioning and. But also has to be strong, and they're different personalities. Yeah. One thinks he should be in the NBA, the other one. <laughs> he should be a writer, which is worse. I'm sorry. He thinks he should be a writer, which is worse. Oh yeah, that's right. The other one, the other one's uh, writing for really throwing the flag. Yeah, he's writing for the school newspaper. Uh, <laughs> which one? Uh, I'm talking about Sonny. Um, Sonny Styles. Oh. Like what his makeup is right now. Um, where does he kind of rank on the list of guys you couldn't wait to put hands up? Well, he hasn't enrolled in school yet, but I know what he is and what he brings, and he's a pretty good athlete. So we'll just have to wait and see when, when he gets here, gets rocking and rolling. Could you answer it about DeJuan and Harris in terms of their potential physically? What he's is? He's been questioned about, about uh, Sonny, but why the Harris and DeJuan? Well, I mean, you got you got the typical left tackle body, and you got the typical giant body, and they, they, I mean, all these, it's ridiculous the amount of talent they have. They could be as good as they want to be. And all these mock drafts that we have in this Yeah, you, you got to go do it, though. You got to go do it. We've seen all those before. What happened to that guy? So, I guess sticking on that offensive line, when you have a guy <clears throat> with the work ethic, the personality, the, the way he is, Donovan, how, how fun is it to get to work with a guy like Donovan? Yeah, he's an interesting, he's an interesting, uh, He's an interesting dude because he, uh, he's one of the most explosive, strong, powerful guys I've ever been around. Uh, he's got a unique personality. He's a great person. So we'll see how he does. Who's, who's the fastest guy in the team? Ooh. 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 Fastest guy on the team right now? <laughs> it's either, again, somebody's going to get mad. Uh, it's either J.K. Johnson or <laughs> I'll take one from offense or one from defense. J.K. Johnson on defense. I'm going to go Jaden Ballard on offense. Somebody will get mad. Who's the one that's most likely to get mad on the side of the ball that you just said that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they all they all think they're fast. Who's the strongest? Uh, well, you've got there's some strong cats. Um, Donovan's pretty strong. Him and Luke Whippler are pretty strong on offense, on defense. Um, those, 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 
you've got it. Those inside, all those inside tackles are all pretty strong. Best overall athlete. Best overall athlete. I, I will not answer that question because they will come after me on that one. <laughs> when, when a guy like CJ Hicks, who it kind of seems like with his body type, there's a lot of different paths that could work out for him. So how do you approach a guy like that? Um, very athletic. I think you look at what position we're going to play him at, or where we see him to play at, and then what best fits him um, in terms of body type. You know. Height, weight, obviously can't be about height, weight, you know, strength. But I see, I see a lot of potential. There. But do, you, I mean, do you, you can, do you look at a guy like that because well, if he puts on this so much, is there too much weight he could put on as long as it's good weight? Or? Yeah, you got to make sure you're, you're. We've got again from all the sports science, all the um, stats, all the analytics. You know, if you're going to play Will linebacker or Sam linebacker or Mike linebacker. We've got, over the last 30 years of NFL combines, NFL uh, data, co collegiate data, our data, we, you know, you're going to fit, fit in that speed, agility, change of direction, all that stuff you look at. It's not just about putting weight on, it's muscle mass, and being able to maintain or increase, you know, obviously increase speed, or get faster, be able to change direction more efficiently. Athletically, what makes Jackson um, I think a lot of it is his change of direction. It's, it's ridiculous. He, there's no wasted movement. There's no wasted um, space. Um, he, can, he, can, he can cut on a dime. Um, very reactive. He's strong. He's no center of gravity. He's fast, but not the fastest. He's fast, but he's not the fastest. Exactly. And he's, well, he might be the quickest, I don't know. He's very good. He's pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. He'll be mad because he yeah. might say it's not. And the hand eye coordination is. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Touch, right? Yeah. What about the steady guy? What do you want Jackson? Jackson's very, very, very competitive. He's a great player. Um, he's got a lot of energy. He's a guy that needs. Jackson's a guy that needs to be a leader. Jackson Smith needs to be a leader. A leader has to be felt. A leader has to be heard. A leader has to be seen. Every day, all the time. It can't be the third wheel. Jackson needs to be a leader. He will. What'd you say? I'm kind of busting his chops. <laughs> you want that out there? Right to him. Just put it right to him. Right. No. Nick, I know, uh, I know Bam Bam is a guy who yeah. you guys all talk about as a leader. Just what does he bring to your team that maybe we don't all see? I mean, he brings struggle. He brings uh, adversity. He brings... Uh, how he how he bounce how he's bounced back. I mean, it's been a ridiculous story. Um, his faith, his passion, his uh, I call it GSF. And you can figure out what that means. Mm -hmm. um, just everything about him. Like he picks guys up. He's always looking to help the, the, the guy. He's not worried about himself. He's always worried about others. He's a great role model. I um, mean, for him to be chosen last year as captain. Just tells you who he is. How do you see that rub off on the guys around him? Oh, it rubs off because he's always with them. Um, he's always spending time with his with his teammates. He's always trying to, you know, if somebody has a bad day, he's right there. If somebody has a good day, he's right there. Um, he's the kind of guy you want to be around. You know, you just want to be around that guy. Um, he means so much to this program. It's, you just don't have any idea how much he means. I know you're not the injury guy. But Ryan said his injury was minor. Yeah, he's full speed. Uh, and he's the, he's the other receiver, Marvin. Uh, very talented guys are in very different ways, right? You got those two, you got Julian, you got a bunch of guys. How does Julian help? Yeah, they're all, they're all good, all looking forward to having a great summer. And, you know, they all bring different things, but, you know, it's exciting. Marvin, be easy for a guy to uh, those guys are driven like they're 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 like they're in here at five o'clock in the morning on their own running routes catching jugs like they do so much you have to like give them a plan of you can't come back and run routes after practice you can't you have to do you're gonna you're not gonna hold up you got to do this 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 and this but that's that's fun. That's fun to be around those guys because they're always looking to get better. How can I do more? What can I do extra? 
you can talk about success is because of mine. Oh, wow. Obviously. He's with him. He's coaching him. What makes him special? Um, I think I think there's a few things. I think his um, he's played it at a high level. Um, he's been through it. Um, he's developed. Uh, he understands it. He connects with him, which is probably the most important thing. Uh, he drives him. Um, he relates to him. He you know, kind of all the things that a coach you know, motivates, inspires. You talk about Jackson as a step up as a leader in there. Is, 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 is Trayvon one of those guys who's been who's been showing himself as a leader in the weight room? I mean, how have you seen him? Who's that? Trayvon Henderson. How, have you seen oh yeah, him yeah, yeah. You, how, Trey, Trey, lo- you know, Trey loves to lift weights, and sometimes it's easy if you love to do something. It's easy to do that. So he he's a he's a he's a bunch of he's a ball of energy now. And, uh, every day it's you know. I could say he was one of those guys on, on squads that somebody was asking about as, as one of the guys. Um, yeah, he's been great. Yeah, talking to Tony, I mean, he was a little more, I guess, reserved when he first came in here. Like, <laughs> Not that, anymore. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I was wondering. Like, how have you seen that evolve? Well, I, 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 think, I, think that, I think that goes without saying of, of these other guys who haven't played. And it's, it's hard to step out from your peers when you haven't been out on the field. Not to see what Cam Brown has done, that's what makes him special. He hasn't really been out there very much. And a lot of guys are like, they hold back because they haven't played. So, did you, did you think Denzel Burke could be what he was? When did you realize this kid's not just... Yeah, uh, during a spring ball last year. Not this past year, last year. He was just covering guys. Like It's easy to see. That guy's covering guys. And again, we, he, was a, he was a COVID recruit. I, I don't think he's ever been on campus. So... That, that's that's cool to see some of that development. You mentioned how you try to innovate every year. How different is what you're doing now than it was when you first arrived here 10 years ago? Oh, um, I think that the principles are lasting. You're going to work hard. You're going to show up on time. You're going to be a great teammate. You're going to be a leader. You're going to do all those things. But I think, like I said, I think with the sports science initiative that we've been working on the last you know five, six years, it's, it's evolving. It's always evolving, just like offenses and defenses, always evolving, always changing, always developing, always growing. And um, uh, that's been good. That's, that's, there's a lot of assessment going on, uh, obviously looking at the research and talking to the people that we're talking to, try to make our program better uh, as we move forward. Is that something where you feel like, like every year, like you have to add some new things? Just to- I don't think you have to add new things to add new things. I think you have to add new things or add things that have been proven you know, scientifically and how you can, uh, you know, add those into your program. Was there ever a time in your career, American, where you thought about being like a football position coach? I mean, never. Getting out of the strength and conditioning never. world? Never. Because we you know there are guys who have made that transition. Never. Just, what, what, what is it about you that this is what's right I think I can make more of an impact on more people, um, on more of our players, being strength and conditioning coach, being around them, talking about culture every day and, you know, growing up as a man, um, you know, improving physically, mentally, emotionally, um, than you are as a position coach. You only got your, your guys. I just I just felt you had that more of an impact. You were an urban guy, obviously, and then Ryan comes. You didn't know him. Oh, I guess Florida. Yeah, he was our GA. Oh yeah, I've known Ryan for a long time. But very different. Yeah, different. I mean, very different. Um, I know you weren't really kept to the day when you were the left. What's your relationship like with Ryan? How is that chemistry? With yeah, it's, it's an awesome relationship, um, and we've had a great, a great relationship when he was, you know, the offense coordinator before, um, you know, before he became the head coach. So we, we've, you know, it's, it's great. It's, it's, um, it's one of those where you can go in his office and tell him what you think. Tell him what you feel. He asks, you know, what do you see? And uh, we can have great conversation back to make our program better. We're both in it for the for the same reason. Um, and uh, he's a great person. Like I said, I've known him for how many years? What's he like with GA? GA, he was <laughs> he was running around so much. Uh, I just remember him being like just a, a worker, you know, just being a worker and trying to get everything done. Because back then, GAs had to do everything. 
Now GAs are uh, a little spoiled GAs are right now. GAs are spoiled right now. So you have two big announcements. Yeah. GAs are spoiled. <laughs> Nick, you might have been asking this before I walk up here, but how did you tailor things in the winter and now in the coming summer? Y'all didn't get the y'all didn't get to where you wanted to go last year you know, from the team standpoint. How do you tailor it that the changes you've made, maybe the more intensity or whatever, is not punishment, but you know what I mean? Yeah. But development. I mean, yeah. I, how did you? And, again, I think you got to look at every every team. You know, in January when they show back up, you got a whole new team. And what are the needs? What are the weaknesses? What are the strengths? What are the opportunities? What are the threats? You almost do a SWOT analysis of each team to see what you know where direct. Obviously, physically. You know, bigger, stronger, faster. You got tweaks and trying to get some things. But this year it was it was about leadership, and that was our main focus. It wasn't the focus, but it was a high priority focus. Yeah. Was and, and leadership. Did y'all did y'all identify that, that maybe that was a little lacking? I mean, how, how does that come about? I guess you know. Um, I think it comes about from yeah. You look back at the year and you see what what happened and and where we could have been better at and. Again, I think it all stems to it's the first time a lot of these guys have played. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden now they're okay, here we go. So give me one guy, you probably said this already, one guy that stepped up over the last six months. As a leader? As a leader that maybe surprised you. Um oh wow. Uh, I mean you could be two guys. <laughs> Tommy Eichenberg was, was, was pretty good. Um, it's pretty good. And I paired up. I can't give everybody's name, but I paired up. I paired up guys as leaders that were maybe a little differently or different personalities, which was kind of fun to see how that would work. But uh, uh, yeah, that was good stuff. But, but Tommy, what, how did that show up with Tommy? I mean, specifically. I mean, when we talked with him in the past, it's really. I just think there was a lot of responsibility. We uh, we we. we Kind of listed out exactly what the responsibilities of the leader was. Again, what we were looking for, what they had to cover, what they had to improve at. Step forward if you want to be a leader, and then here you go. And cultivation throughout time, he, he did that. Nick, I know a couple years ago Last there were a lot of Nick, uh, reminders about the Clemson game around. Is there a lot of 42-27 around the building right now? Uh, uh, you guys will probably already know the answer. So. Good? Yeah. Okay.